Hello Sellers, welcome back to the Mother Show. Today we're going to be making some swirl candy bubble bars. Now I know the last time I made a swirl candy video, you guys really liked it, so I wanted to kind of make more of that. This is essentially just a dough that is super fun to play with. It's easily my favorite soap to make. And then you can pretty much shape it into whatever you want and you just let it sit for 24 hours and it dries. And then all you have to do is you put it under running water and you crumble it up and it creates bubbles. It's very bubbly, as the name suggests. It's a it's a bubble bar. <laughs> Let me know in the comments below, what is your favorite kind of candy? Do you prefer chocolate candies or do you prefer fruity hard candies? I Jeez, I think I prefer chocolates, I really do. Also, please let me know in the comments below if you have any other requests for different cosmetics, um, whether it be soap or lip balm or whatever you can imagine, I will try my best to make it happen. Let's get styling in three, two, one. In three, two, one. What are my car sales, what is this? Okay, so this is what you're going to need. You will need some cornstarch, baking soda, cream of tartar, vegetable glycerin, SLSA, food coloring or soap coloring, any kind of oil of your choice, as well as a pair of gloves. We are going to start off by adding in one cup of baking soda, one tablespoon of jojoba oil, a third a cup of cornstarch, a third a cup of cream of tartar, and one whole cup of SLSA. This stuff is so dusty, so if you're sensitive to dust and stuff, you may want to wear a mask because I was coughing quite a bit. Here I'm adding in a one third a cup of glycerin. And finally, this is optional, but you can add in a few drops of your favorite soap safe fragrance. Next, we're going to go ahead and mix it up. At first it's really powdery, but as you mix it, it'll become more dough-like. Once it becomes fairly sticky, we're gonna go ahead and just use our hands to make it nice and doughy. Um, the more that you smush it around with your hands, the more the heat from your hands helps it become more doughy. Next, we are going to take some parchment paper and lay it out on a clean surface. Or, it doesn't really matter if it's clean or not because you have parchment paper. And then, we're going to take all of our dough and we're going to combine it into one giant ball. <laughs> Once we have a nice, even circle, we're going to go ahead and cut it into fours like this. Now, we're going to place each triangle into a bowl of its own, and then we're going to go ahead and just add in food coloring. Um, I personally found that food coloring is more vibrant than liquid soap coloring, so that's why I'm using food coloring. It just turns out more vibrant in my experience. Maybe I just don't have very good soap. <laughs> uh, soap food coloring. I mean soap coloring with- oh my god. Okay, so as you can see, I am creating four colors, but you can do as many as you want. You just have to end up um, cutting more triangles before you actually, you know, add in the colors. Now I am creating these kind of triangular shapes. I don't know if this is- I don't know if this is a triangle, conical triangle. I don't know. Uh, mathematicians, let me know in the comments below what kind of shape is this. We're trying to make them as even as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and cut each triangle into three equal parts like this. I'm wiping the knife in between so that the colors don't mix them, you know, make it look messy. Alrighty then. Now I'm just, you know, putting them away and I'm going to go ahead and wipe this parchment paper because I don't want the colors to mix up. Then I'm going to just start putting the little triangles together. You can do any kind of uh, pattern you'd like. I just kind of free handed it. <laughs> so once you create your little circular cute flower looking thing, we're gonna go ahead and start squishing the triangles together. And this is super fun, you guys. It feels like you're playing with Play-Doh. This is why I love this so much. <laughs> if you decide to use more than a third of glycerin, you'll end up with a more doughy uh, final product. But by using only a third of glycerin, um, you actually, it ends up drying out and becoming more powdery. So you can kind of mix that up depending on what kind of result you want. Here I'm squishing them together as well as raising them up. And uh, here I realized that the purple triangle kind of got lost. But that's how you can kind of try to dig for it, but it's no big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once I have a pretty good height going on, I'm going to go ahead and lay it down horizontally. Now I'm going to start rolling it up with the parchment paper. And with this process, it's better to just kind of watch this. I don't know how else to explain it. You just kind of keep rolling it, wiping the area, then re-rolling it and kind of pushing down on it ever so slightly. Our goal is to basically elongate it.
All right, so now we are done. Uh, this is the size that I wanted, so I decided to stop there. Now you can just go ahead and slice your little bubble bars, and this part is super satisfying and so much fun. And you can go ahead and shape it into little circles, just so that when you lay it out to dry, it'll stay in that shape. Once you finish cutting up your bubble bars, you can lay them out for about 24 hours to let them get nice and hard. Or if you if you went with the Play-Doh type of final product, then I mean, it's gonna stay soft either way. So you can use it immediately, just kind of a matter of what kind of final product you want. Um, but if you wanted to dry out and you ended up using um, only a third of glycerin, then you are going to end up having to wait 24 hours for it to dry. Here, I just went ahead and made a tiny roll and then chop that up to make little <laughs> bubble bars. This isn't, I mean, this isn't really very practical. It doesn't have a purpose to it. You can take a whole bunch of them and throw them into the tub, I guess. I just kind of wanted to do this because it was kind of fun and I could do this with it using skewers. <laughs> so there you have it, my friends. All you have to do is crumble it or squeeze it into your water. Um, and as the water runs, it'll grow bubbles. It'll be super bubbly. Enjoy. I hope you guys enjoy your new bubble bars. The fun thing about this is you can pretty much do any color combination. Now, if you do try out this project, please share with me on social media using the hashtag DIY with Sophie. I love seeing your pictures. You guys are so talented and just like, I don't know, it just makes me feel like I'm in a big family where we're just like making things and getting creative. Today, I want to talk about the importance of starting conversations. Now, I know I used to be a really shy person to where I could never imagine myself sitting next to a stranger and to initiate conversation. I think it was like my last semester of college. I finally grew out of that. And I think I was going back home. I was on a plane, taking a plane from Maryland to Oklahoma. And I was, you know, on the plane. And usually, see, if I was sitting next to strangers, usually I wouldn't really say much. I would say, hi, you know, how are you, whatever. And it would kind of end a thought. But I said, hey, you know, what are you reading there? This time, this one time, I decided to initiate a conversation. I said, you know, you know, how are you? Where are you traveling to? Where are you from? Um, so on and so forth. And I learned so much. You just never know who you're going to meet and how you're going to change that person's life or how they're going to change your life. I think personally, I think everyone wants to start a conversation. You could do both of you a favor and start it yourself. You can find me on Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, and Facebook where we can talk and get to know each other. So yeah, love you guys to the moon. I will see you soon. Keep smiling. Yeah.